Ah, uh, Skellige again? What is this? Whoops, there we go. Ah, uh, Skellige again? What is, what is it? Why are we playing against Skellige? Skellige is all that I play up against. But anyway, so here we go. So we're going up against a pretty, uh, pretty discardy, discardy brand. I start. I went first in this round, so I played out my crones. I've explained this before, but this allows me to thin the cards on my deck while at the same time allowing me to have a big strength total to allow me to play more flexible plays like hounds. Now, uh, in this particular situation, uh, like. Playing the Crones is pretty much necessary because he played out the super high tempo play. And I'm not sure if he actually did that because he was going to do that anyway, or if because uh, he wanted to play, uh, apply the pressure on me. But otherwise, I mean, but still. Uh, so I guess the, uh, I'm not really sure what the deck list of veteran, the current like popular veteran brand decks are, but I'm not really sure they run skirmishers. So I'm not actually, I don't really remember what's in stock with this video, but. It's one that I highlighted, so here we go. Okay, so he passes here. Um, this is kind of just like a, a big... <laughs> okay, so there's like a, a whole lot, a whole lot of nothing going on here. It, it's kind of... Let's, let's take the step up a step. One, I played out Crones because it's a high tempo play and it allows me to deck then. Why did I do that? Because I'm going first in this round and I generally want to play reactively, which means they're low tempo plays. And by doing this, this allows me to allow him to play out a unit for me to aim my frost out so that like going like playing out crones first is a really really good play if you're going first and allows you to not necessarily flip the coin but a, a basically flip the coin in a sense you're still disadvantageous but you lessen the the burden of going first okay number two uh why did i play out the the hound i played out the hound because i knew i had some uh this buffer to allow me to play low tempo options home with the hound also i set up my frost to start ticking three why did i play out aridin instead of one of my other cards i played out aridin because i knew i wanted a high tempo play and stay above him i also wanted to, uh, my weather to take as much as possible also four i wanted to pick wild on hound uh not hound um uh, Rider, because I wanted one to be in my discard pile because I wanted a target for Sly Lizard, which will allow me to pull him out from my deck. Whew. Uh, and another option could have been Aridin into Navigator into another Wild Hunt Hound and place the second weather here, but that kind of runs the potential um, Gremist into just clearing two of these, and also I already have a wild on that in my hand. I would have played that instead, but instead I went for the side table play and forced him to pass on my terms. I didn't really expect him to pass there, but I guess he didn't really have any good plays. So this is kind of a trouble situation, right? He has one card here. I can't just try pass, but that's the beauty of spies. I have a spy. I'll play out this spy, or no? I, uh, I'm actually planning out, planning on playing out this round a little bit. And forcing him to kind of reveal what kind of cards he has hidden there. Because I kind of want to bleed him out a little bit. And in doing so, I don't want to draw into a blizzard. So I play my Wild Hunt Hound first. And that takes a blizzard out of the deck. And uh, In case you don't know, blizzard's that spell that gets called upon by the Frost Hunt Hound. And is played. Uh, and when I play my, when I eventually play my spy, it will not, it will be less likely to draw into a blizzard. Which I don't want. I don't want a dead card blizzard in my hand. And also, this gives me the opportunity to pull a card to that row. So it's almost like a drowner in that sense, which can be really helpful. If he's like avoiding my frost rows. And there we go. Now that I have a target to hit with my uh, Frightener. Because keep in mind, this is a two-part card. It not only allows me to draw a card, it also lets me pull a card to that row. Now, this frost is pretty much always going to be ticking. It's up a little bit. <laughs> I just remember it like the ending to this game is really wild. <laughs> okay. So I slew uh my second wild hunt hound. I know he can't get away. He cannot pass because I already have one round on him. He would just lose, which means I can force as much weather on him as I possibly want. Now, of course, he probably has a Gremist. There it is. They always have Gremist. Now I'm going to play out my second wild frost uh white frost and i make sure not to play it on the range row or the siege row because if he, i kill the gremist he could seek grief or restore it and i want to avoid that as much as possible and in anyway uh the ranged and melee row have better targets hit anyway 
So this is really good. Not only am I like forcing out his weather clear with that grimace, but I'm also getting value out of my uh, numerous frosts because it's not a very uncommon situation. And I steal away his grimace for some reason. I guess I didn't want him to decoy it. I also didn't want it to die. I don't know. Uh, just whatever. It's not uncommon to have over to have wasted frost and to have frost actually hit targets and are creating pressure is really nice. Uh, this could have been really troublesome if Grimace had died because then he could he could have moved it to his graveyard and then revived it or restored it or whatever. He moves out Wild Hunt Rider. This is a really like smart heads up play by him because he doesn't allow me to Sly Lizard it anymore. And if you're playing uh, like Don Arn Hinder, that's his name. Um, and this guy's name is Karen Thier. Okay. Um, don't like if you're playing up against this kind of deck that runs Sly Lizard, you should take away, you should use Graveyard Hate to get rid of cards out of their graveyard so they can't bring it back with Sly Lizard or they can't uh, deal with it with Sly Lizard. Now, I have all now knowing he does not have a Grimace and he has no way of accessing Grimace at all, I can uh safely use three uh, my third weather here because I know he has no way of dealing with this. It's very, very unlikely that he runs a, just a plain clear skies. So now I can just bleed him out over the very long term of this round. I, even though I went into this round with one less card, the weather is going to more than make up for it. So it's going to be really huge. And like because he used the Dunar and Hinder to bring it over to his graveyard, I can use Caretaker to bring it out of his graveyard and start using it for my own nefarious purposes. <laughs> and he's going to go ahead and just use the figurine. Okay, whatever. But at the same time, I don't actually have a whole lot of cards here to play, right? Not only does he have more cards, but my cards that I have left are less useful than his cards are going to be. I have one dead card in the card he gave me with Operator, and I have one dead card Slizzard because he uh, used Donner and Hinder to take it away from my graveyard. I could potentially could have used uh, my Slizzard earlier, but I really was not expecting Donner and Hinder. Like, nobody runs Donner and Hinder anymore. So it's really unusual. So that's pretty much my last play. Anything past here is just going to be bleeding him out. I would have loved to uh, use both my two cards to keep bleeding him out with weather. But unfortunately, the cards that I have left are just bad. So what I can do is just use this last card here. And I have to be careful of a hero pass, by the way. But I'm not afraid of that in this situation because my frost is going to be doing six damage to turn. So he can't hero pass. Which is to say he can't just pass on me and force me to overplay a card and not actually be able to win the round. So I got him to play out his second pirate captain. That's really big. So I did playing out my basically worthless card here. He had to play out his other. He had to play out his second pirate captain, which was 15 strength. Now, I. Now, I would never play this last card, this last dead card, because it would not get me above his strength total and he'd just be able to pass even with all that beautiful frost ticking down. It's really sad to not be able to get more value out of that frost, but yeah, whatever. Get rid of the slide there because I have no value out of it. Now, this is, oh, this is so bad, right? He has two cards. I have two cards. One of them is a dead Igni. What am I going to do with this dead Igni against, against the Skellige deck? This is not going to work. Oh, this is so bad. And look, uh, it, I'm going second. So yeah, I have last say, but oh, oh. No, it's not enough. Oh, man, it's only 24. What am I going to... Oh! <laughs> oh? <laughs> and I was just like, oh, my God, saved. Saved. That was so lucky. I think that's like the luckiest I've ever been in Gwent. Not only did I draw into Igni, possibly the only card that would have won me that situation, outside of like something like Crones, which I already used. But also that his last two cards were cards that were locked to the melee row and that powered up to be over 25 strength. Oh, man, that was so lucky. I'm not I'm not saying like that was anything skill based. That was entirely luck, but also a little bit of my own setup because I, I won round one that allows me to go last in round three. Which allowed me to play that. If I if I had lost round two and we'd been in the same cards in round three, I would have had to play Igni before he played his second card, which would have been basically you know nothing. I would have, I would have got nothing and I would have lost. Oh, that was so so close. Oh, <laughs> like you could tell. I mean, I can tell. 
uh, because my recording stops here after 15 minutes, which means I played one game and then I played this game and then I stopped, <laughs> which is unusual because I usually play like an hour's worth. That's how that's how much of a toll this game was on my on my psyche. OK. Uh, points in this video, major points in this video. Um, be lucky. That's a big one. Two. Uh, playing a, play a little bit more about playing around Gremist. Uh, if I'd killed his Gremist, he could have revived it potentially. Uh, I I knew that the last card that I had, he doesn't know what my very last card was, but he knew I had a Pirate Captain. And I can play that Pirate Captain out to force him to play out his one, which is significantly more valuable than my own. Because of the fear of, because he couldn't pass on me because he would just lose, uh, even if I did have a dead card, because the Frost was ticking. So by playing out that one extra card, that actually probably that single decision probably won me the game. Let's say that. Sure, it was lucky, but at the same time, like luck favors the prepared, right? I prepared for that situation by paring down his cards as much as possible with my quote unquote dead cards. And that's the glorious thing about Frost and Frost Airden is that you can play mind games and like uh, rely on like these other factors of the game as opposed to not as as opposed to just relying on like brew strength but anyway that that's for another time thanks for watching